Hi, hello, Detective Douglas here. It's me getting back out into the dating game and also celebrating Halloween at the same time. Two birds, one stone and all that. I do keep getting thrown out of the AV areas, but here we are. It's time for Cryptid Crush. A pleasant jingle echoes into the night air as the door leading out of a roadside mini-mart swings open. You walk out the starlight, a newcomer to the town of Long Hope, carrying a convenience store sushi roll and a cheap flashlight. That sushi was... Suspiciously underpriced. I guess this is what we look like. You shovel back to your car, bounty in tow, and gaze over the horizon. You stare off towards the sleeping town of Long Hope, so we are new to this town. Uh, you haven't had a moment to yourself since that cat pra practically poofed into existence, but you'd better get going. Opening the door, you pop, plop down the bag of groceries with a bit of a huff, and your ear catches a low, restrained sound of claws scraping against leather. The sound of some terrible creature trying to hide her devilry. Oh, great. Just fantastic. Taro! You goblin! That's my car! <laughs> well, as my Meowther always said, the world is your scratching post. We have our cat that showed up. He lifts her chin slightly in purrs. I'll consider sparing your car's interior if you offer me something I want. She tilts her head to one side and closes her eyes expectantly. Fine. You roll your eyes and reach over, gently scratching Taro behind the ears. He's oddly cold for such a big fuzzy cat. <laughs> a real handful, Taro. Seriously, what kind of cat drives me out past midnight for some expired sushi? We have places to be! <laughs> and Yangel, of course. Oh, that's what I call myself anyway. You do know I'm not just a normal cat, right? Now, paw over the goods, I'm hungry! You peel off the plastic wrap and slide it towards the demanding cat. How does a ghost cat eat? The world may never know, so we have a ghost with us. You sigh, turning the key in the ignition, the old car rattling to life. You'd better get going before I totally check it out. The car drives off, peeling out of the convenience store parking lot and down the dimly lit streets of Long Hope. So we are new to this town of Long Hope. This is really pretty. I like this a lot. Speaking of ghost, aren't we on the lookout for that phantom frequency? Hmm. Our meows as she gazes out the window and the car drives off the road. All right. You slide your hand over the dash and click on the stereo. Radio whirs on with harsh static as it switches between frequencies until it reaches 103.1. Delilah. Probably. The static is cut with a crisp and peppy tune, cueing the start of some sort of radio show. Ah, oh, the Kirlian Frequency. That's a good show on Netflix. Check it out. clears his throat for emphasis and puts on a silly voice. Hey, lovely. You want to make thousands working with a flexible schedule for <laughs> That's pretty good. Of course you do. That's fan mail. Ha, <laughs> that's good. I like it. Loyal family and become the independent girl boss of your dreams. Oh, I tried to undertake that with Lou LaRoe. No, none of you bought for me and I'm very disappointed in you. I have all these Tiny leggings. Really? Wait, what? Hang on, that took a turn. Wow. Thanks much for that thrilling and oddly fleshy flutter. Seriously, this thing is me. Gross. You turn off the radio. Yuck. For real. Didn't you mail in a fan letter? I try. Turns out 666 Spooky Station isn't an address. You grimace, glancing out the window as the woods begin thinning out into a clearing. The skeletal frame of your radio tower stretches up over the horizon. Of the radio tower. Looming over your destination. Elkhorn Radio Station. Let's go. Pull again to the overgrown parking lot. You park between the fading lines. Taro hops up and jumps onto her human's arms. Insisting on being carried like the oversized baby she is. You open the car door and step outside. You feel the brush of Taro's whiskers against your cheek. Somewhat easing your fears. Oh dear. We have a ghost cat with us. There's some sort of ghost frequency. It's just a haunted station on a hill, no big deal. You click on the hefty flashlight with a tight grip. 
You turn your attention instead to a large sheet of wood sprayed, painted with crude letters. Attached to the fence, you read it out loud. Keep out. Trespassers will be murdered. Yeah. Where is everyone? Lishing her tail, Taro paces around the parking lot. It's already 2 a.m. They should have been here by now. Checking the time, you stuff your phone into your pocket and scan your surroundings with your flashlight. Roll difficulty was eight. I didn't do anything. I didn't click. I didn't roll. I did nothing. The flashlight scans over the empty lot, light dragging across the shattered windows and over the overgrown shrubbery. It suddenly catches a pair of beady red eyes lurking in the tree line, the light glinting off the unblinking eyes. You yelp in surprise, dropping a flashlight. In a flash, the figure leaps from the branches and flays its wings, swooping down before landing with a somersault. Dramatically, the very clouds of a head part, silvery moonlight, revealing the creature's feathery visage. I love it. Wait. Atlas? Hey, uh. The one and only. I thought I'd scope out the perimeter before diving right in. After his dramatic entrance, Atlas shakes out his glossy feathers and flaps his large wings. This is the Mothman, named Atlas. I'm not sure if it's always been named Atlas or if that's strictly from Amnesty from the Adventure Zone. And if this game named it after him. His antenna twitch as he stands on one leg, poking Taro with one of his hind claws. Hold on a sec. Is this a spirit you mentioned? I kind of expected something more impressive. Taro fluffs up her whiskers, standing on in as she hisses. I am great and powerful, a cosmic guardian. She bites one of the Mothman's talons. Atlas pulls away, breaking out of Taro's grip. It's not too late to be haunted by something cooler, right? Taro's doing her best. You're just jealous you don't have a familiar following you around. Honestly, if I had to pick, I'd want a raven familiar. Too bad ravens hate me. Better eat you. Atlas grabs the flashlight. Sorry for spooking you. Breaking through the greenery, a single blue flame casts an eerie light over a large imposing demon shredding off into the clearing. Ooh. A heavy pair of bolt cutters resting at their hip. Sorry to keep you waiting. Whoa. Yeah. Ah, it seems everyone has arrived. The tall devil stares down, as if evaluating the small human and his spectral cat. How'd you get here so fast? Eggs. I suppose I'll scout on ahead since you seem to be in such capable claws. The feline hovers past the demon, floats through the fence, and disappears into the overgrowth. Yes, you. Follow me. I think we should follow suit. Jamie is the Jersey Devil, and we've got Atlas, the Mothman, and Douglas, and uh, Taro, the Ghost Cat. Jamie struts towards the chain link fence, unsheathing the bolt cutters. They snap through the padlock and give a quick thumbs up. Let the crimes commence. Looking through the doorway, Dark interior of the station seems impossibly clean compared to the outside. The waiting room is seemingly suspended in time, only faded from months of neglect. Maybe years. You shuffle in line behind Jamie as you examine the lobby. Stopping a moment, you realize you're the only one with a flashlight. I suspect they have dark vision. Wait, hold well, on. if you can see is the dark. The best you can do? Indeed. I ask if there's any darkness. Oh, oh, I got a story about this one. I actually rely on my capital, my capitate antenna. With these big old eyes, my vision's super sensitive to light. Okay, it's it's not seeing, but it's more like smelling. You have got to be joking. Atlas, can you go a single day without mentioning your insectoid parts? I, I don't mind, really. You twirl the flashlight in your hand, nearly dropping it in the process. Wandering around, Atlas tries the nearest door. After finding it's locked, he shuffles over to the recording studio window and presses his face against the glass. Jimmy frowns and kicks one of the trash cans over. Dozens of lime green soda cans come clanging out, scattering across the floor. They seem surprised, making a face as they scoop up one of the cans. Allow me a moment to collect my thoughts. For an unlocked haunted house, it's surprisingly untouched. I feel wrong trashing the place. I doubt we are alone here. I'll catch you up. So the show was basically this radio host, Madhouse Mike, reading ghost stories and urban myths off of a script. So it's it's uh, Night Vale, essentially. It was all super cheesy and I loved it. I don't understand why. Anyways, he's the ghost we're looking for. Madhouse was an expert on the supernatural, so I'm certain 
he might know something about your curse. It was totally tragic. Madhouse died while advertising for some sketchy drink company. Okay, so that could be the green drinks we found in here. He thought he could bring in more listeners if he drank the entire sample box. Okay, so he had too much bang, and he went out with it. Ha <laughs> ha! Pretty good. Good one, right? Good job, Douglas. It actually worked for like two seconds. I mean, really. Who trusts a company named Toxic Waste Energy? That's terrible. He drank so much that his skin glowed green, and then he beefed it from all the radiation. Whoa. The studio shut down afterwards, and no one alive has been on air since. Right, I think we need to keep digging. We might find something useful, like a vault of ghostly treasures or a portal to a demon dimension. Atlas, think of all the exclusive merch. We could totally ask for an autograph. Hold on a sec. Think so? Actually, let's check out the record room. There's gotta be some shiny collective vinyls and tapes in there. The Mothman's eyes sparkle. You know, for research purposes. Jimmy absently watches Atlas scamper off deeper into the station, mildly annoyed. They rush past you and open the door before them, ushering the human to follow. So you'll be there for Friday's movie night, right? <laughs> their eyes light up, the flame atop their head flickering a warmer blue. Carrying stuffed sweet potatoes, chicken skewers, and jalapeno dip. You picture Jamie wearing a gingham apron and oven mitts, all while trying while carrying a tray of freshly baked snickerdoodles. <gasps> you cook? Full time. I have so many questions. They call me the grill master. Jimmy, I need answers. I need you to keep walking. Your sure thing, Grill Master. Do not say that. The Grand you managed to shove the door open, knocking down a filing cabinet, blocking the doorway within the room. Jumping over the cabinet, you gaze around the office. This room is completely trashed. Loose papers are scattered across the carpet. Green sludge is smeared across the walls, and a bookshelf full of records and trophies are smashed to bits. Oh dear. Atlas looks out a gasp, stumbling towards the pile of vinyls, and falls to his knees. Oh, look at that shadow. Oh, no. What kind of monster did this? So all the things are like scattered and broken. The Mothman scoops up a handful of shattered records, letting shards fall between his feathers. These were original copies. Couldn't you just download the digital album? No, it's about the rich omnidimensional sound! Ignoring Atlas's mournful muttering, Jamie runs their hand across the wall, tracing out the words written in faintly glowing slime. Allow me a moment to collect my thoughts. Dailyghostwatch.net I do not understand. Jamie steps back, reading the words scrawled onto the wall. Sounds like a website. I know that one. It's a blog that reports on abnormal occurrences. I was actually a mod there for like a month. Right. We'd better take a look around. Success! Roll difficulty! Eight! Alright, so I did roll that one. I stopped them. And I guess if you don't stop them, they will stop on their own. Where should I start? Four left. We're gonna continue in the next episode, and I'll see you over there where we make our first choice.